Welcome to Jarnak Tutorial 5, Reaction Stoichiometry and Oscillators. Circadian rhythms are common occurrences in biological systems, and many of these rhythms are controlled by biochemical oscillators. In this tutorial, we will investigate a well-known oscillator called the Brusselator. This oscillator is a highly simplified model of the famous belasov zabotinsky chemical oscillator. The reaction scheme is shown on the screen. One of the characteristic features of the scheme is the autocatalytic nature of the second reaction. That is, for every 2x species consumed, 3x species are produced. This reaction is therefore quite unstable. However, as x increases exponentially, it also removes y exponentially, the result being that at a critical point, the second reaction stops due to lack of y, and the concentration of x collapses. y now starts to build again due to the third reaction, and in turn will eventually stimulate the autocatalytic reaction. This process of crash and boom continues indefinitely, or until the source material A and B are used up in a real experiment. In this tutorial, we are going to observe the effect of different rate constants on the oscillatory properties of this network. Again, we start with a model partially entered into Jarnak. We have our pathway P, as well as four fixed species, A, B, C, and D, and two floating species, X and Y. The next step is to identify the reactions. In this case, we have reactions with coefficients larger than 1. We include this in the reaction definition by simply placing integer coefficients in front of the different species. We can now see our four reactions rate laws, with the coefficients in reaction 2 accounting for the non-unity stoichiometry. Our many parameters and variables will be initialized to the values shown on screen. We will then run a simulation from 0 to 100 units, measuring the concentrations of x and y, graphing these results. Running this script, we will see a graph which shows oscillatory patterns in the concentrations of x and y. We can observe changes in these oscillation patterns by changing the rate constants and producing new graphs. This concludes the final Jarnak tutorial. By now, you should have a good idea of how to use Jarnak, as well as some basic knowledge about common biological models.